Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 173.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released May 6th, 2015, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Arcadia number 1. When 99% of humankind is wiped out by a pandemic, 4 billion people are saved by being digitized at the brink of death and uploaded into Arcadia, a utopian simulation in the cloud. But when Arcadia begins to rapidly deplete the energy resources upon which the handful of survivors survivors in the real world, aka the meat, depends how long will the meat be able and willing to help, featuring the first of five connecting covers by Matt Taylor. Next we have cluster number four, the clock is ticking, mourning the death of crewmates and trying to stay ahead of the enemies on their trail. Samara and Grace will have to decide who to trust in order to get back to prison before their time runs out. We've also got Dayman number 7, Justice by Day has finally arrived as David Reed faces off against Jacob the Burner in a ritualistic battle to the death with the fate of Azalea and the entire Virgo family hanging in the balance. The end is drawing near, will David's cane join the ranks of fallen Dayman gracing the walls of Virgo Mansion? Next we have Dead Letters number 9, after expanding the gang war through the burrows and into every area of here, Sam Whistler is faced with the choice. Does he attempt to unite the various factions under the banner to claim here's independence, or does he search for God and with that perhaps a way back home? We've also got Feathers number 5, feeling alone and betrayed by Bianca and Gabriel, Poe finds a humbled and apologetic Z who tells him that all the mice have been taken by the Scarf Man. Next, we have Halogen number 3 of 4. In a shocking display, Det takes down Hale so that she, Rel, and Mason can reach the Halogen ship and escape. As they make their way back to City Ship Q, Rel has to figure out what to do with Det. We've also got Palmiotti and Brady's The Big Con Job number 3 of 4. The crew is picked and now the con is on. Just when the team thinks nothing can go wrong, reality sets in and tosses a monkey wrench their way. And we've got regular show number 23, Rigby and High Five Ghost find cryptic information about the strange movie from Rigby's childhood on a message board, leading them to believe it was about dinosaur aliens. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Angel and Faith Season 10 Number 14. Fred continues to struggle against the power of Elyra and reveals to Angel and Faith her great fear of losing control. Meanwhile, Co deals with the reality that her quest for vengeance may be futile. Next we have Baltimore, the Cult of the Red King, number one of five. The Red King is legendary, but is he the stuff of myth or the ultimate adversary of the human race? In this series, Lord Baltimore discovers the truth about an ancient evil that threatens to destroy the world. We've also got Neverboy, number three of six. It's time for Neverboy to come clean, at least with his wife. He has the drugs to get his family back, but can he convince Rachel to stay after she discovers the truth? Julian Drag gets a taste of what lies beyond reality. Unfortunately, a single glimpse into another world might not satisfy a man on the brink. Secrets are revealed and doors open as the rabbit hole widens. Next, we have Rack God number 4 of 5. Eisner Award Hall of Fame inductee Richard Corbin presents a chilling new story inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft. When city slicker Clark Elwood travels into the woods searching for his Native American girlfriend, he discovers a town of strange inhuman people, savage animals, and unspeakable fear. And we've got Witcher Fox Children number 2 of 5. While the crew of the Prophet ponders what terrible fate will befall them as recompense for their wickedness, a supernatural storm strikes the cursed vessel. When the Tempest forces the ship up a strange and deadly river, Geralt must use all of his Witcher cunning if he hopes to survive. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got John Carter, Warlord of Mars number 6. The battle for Barsoom reaches its climax as John Carter and the villainous Captain Joshua Clark face off in a winner-take-all duel to the death. But even if John Carter triumphs, will he be too late to save his beloved Dejah Thoris? The critically acclaimed relaunch by writer Ron Mars and artist Abhishek Malsuni reaches the end of its first arc and sets the stage for all the epic adventures to come. Next, we have Masks 2, number 2 of 8. The influence of the fiendish Red Death spans histories. In the 30s, she stood against the Shadow, the Green Hornet, and the Black Terror. In the 70s, the Red Death resurfaced to challenge two surprising heroes, the new Black Sparrow and Miss Fury. We also have Swords of Sorrow, number 1 of 6. Dynamite's fiercest females in their biggest event ever. Fan favorite Gail Simone and rising art star Sergio Davila 
combined to tell the ultimate pulp adventure featuring Vampirella, Deja Thoris, Red Sonia, Kato, Jungle Girl, and many, many more. Villains and heroes from a dozen worlds and eras face off against a legendary evil that threatens all their homelands. Don't miss this thrilling epic tale, an event supported by one-shot side adventures written by the hottest writers today like G. Willow Wilson, Marguerite Bennett, Nancy Collins, and more. Next, we have Swords of Sorrow Chaos Special Number 1 One Shot, a team up set up by Swords of Sorrow's Gail Simone, featuring the writer that she handpicked, Marguerite Scott, who are the villains behind the epic Swords of Sorrow event. Discover the darkest minds in Dynamite's roster, the kind of ladies who are fond of how bloodstains look on six inch heels. To quote writer Marguerite Scott, Swords of Sorrow is going to be a hell of a party, and Chaos is your blood soaked invitation. Take a ride with some of the deadliest women in the Dynamite universe as they prove the only thing you have to fear is them. And we've got Uncanny Season 2, number 2 of 6, hunted across South America both by the mysterious organization known as Cadre and their former employer Deacon Styles. Weaver and Maggie will have to tap into previously undiscovered powers if they're going to survive. But can their mysterious new ally Morgan be trusted? From IDW Publishing, we've got Orphan Black, number 3, a scientist with a mysterious illness. Cosima must use every ounce of her bravery and intellect to save her clone sisters and herself. Next, we have Samurai Jack, number 19. Jack reunites with the team of dapper archaeological dogs as they search for the canine ancestry, but the secrets they fetch will leave them howling. And we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutanimals, number 3 of 4. The Mutanimals' ranks have swelled, and they're ready to rumble. Noel has a couple of surprises in store, though. From Image Comics, we've got Artifacts Lost Tales, number 1. Witchblade, Heartstone, Bloodsword. Three short stories featuring three artifacts by three talent hunt winning creative teams in this special one shot. Next we have Descender number three. As the brutal robot hunting scrappers close in on Tim 21, the events that first brought him to the mining colony on the outer edge of space are revealed. We've also got Elephant Men number 64. How did it get so late so soon? Hip Flask and Mickey spend a night in. Next we have God Hates Astronauts number 8. Flagrant misuse of the time-traveling Cosmo chair leads to some extremely stupid dumbness of the stupidest order. We've also got Jupiter Circle number 2. It's 1958 America and Dr. Richard Conrad is a superhero and celebrated surgeon with another identity that he struggles to keep hidden from his trusted teammates. When the director of the FBI threatens to reveal his secret, Richard is forced to make an impossible decision, all while his team battles to keep the world safe. Next, we have Minimum Wage, So Many Bad Decisions, number one of six, the first chapter of this new six-issue arc of Bob Fingerman's So Real It Hurts series. What do sex dungeons, sleepy time heart-to-hearts with mutant horseshoe crabs and feelings of frustration have in common? Rob's first post-divorce birthday, of course. Season with a soup on a dream Sylvia and real Sheila and bon appetit. We've also got Nailbiter, number 12, The Dreaded Media Has Arrived. Next, we have No Mercy, number two. Chad and Charlene make a second startling discovery, but with nightfall, death comes for them all again, this time on four feet. We've also got Roche Limit, Clandestiny, number one. The breakout hit of 2014 returns with volume two of this groundbreaking sci-fi trilogy. It's 75 years after the events that left Roche Limit Colony in flames, when a crew of military and science personnel are sent to the forgotten and desolate planet on a mysterious expedition, they quickly learn its dark secrets, and that their mission is not what they thought it to be. With danger lurking all around, the crew members fight to find a way off the planet and resist the mysterious presence that haunts them all. Next we have Rocket Girl number 6, Split Second, Rocket Girl returns for a second time-traveling story arc. In 1986 New York City, the young Johansson vowed to hang up her helmet and jetpack. Now there's no one left to fight the city's wrongs, and what could possibly be happening in the time-traveling 2014 that shouldn't exist at all. We've also got Savage Dragon number 203, Malcolm Dragon faces the explosive power of Neutron Bob, and the deadly duo are sure to make matters worse. It's all-out action and hilarious hijinks as Malcolm faces one of his father's most fearsome foes. Next we have Thief of Thieves number 28, what has Cohen been up to since being dismissed from the FBI, harboring a few grudges with a certain thief? We've also got The Wicked and the Divine number 10. Ragnarok is finally here. The show to end all shows promises to be a lovely experience for all the gods. Wait, oh no! Jamie and Matt have drawn Baphomet drenched in blood on the cover. What a hilarious internal communication error. I'm sure it's a mistake and nothing to do with the story whatsoever. 
And we've got Zero number 16, Edward Zero Faces His Victims. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Dead Drop number one of four, four issues, four stories, one ticking clock. Red Hot Rider Alice Cott of Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, and Rising Star Adam Gorn of Zero start the countdown to Dead Drop as an unlikely cast of superhuman operators fall in deep for an undercover conspiracy action thriller in the darkest corners of the Valiant universe. There's a secret black market in New York. It's hidden in plain sight in our streets, trains, restaurants. Those who know how to navigate it exchange secrets of extraordinary nature. But when the secret in circulation is a biological weapon derived from bind technology, the gloves are off and the most extraordinary agents are released to stop the disaster before it occurs. Otherwise, in less than 30 minutes, there will be no world to come back to. Exo Manowar, Archer, Neville Alcott, Detective Cejudo, and Betamax are ready to save the world. And we've got Valiant Universe Handbook 2015 Edition Number 1, The Epic Origins, The Fearless First Adventures, The Ever-Shifting Allies and Allegiances. In honor of Valiant's 25th anniversary, get everything you need to know about the most formidable heroes and villains that the Valiant Universe has to offer right here with the all-new 40-page handbook for just $2.99. From Animalia to Zephyr, get an essential briefing on Valiant's most important players with a highly detailed and thoroughly updated breakdown of the monumental characters that will be making the Valiant Universe tick in 2015 and beyond. Featuring artwork from an all-star cast of Valiant superstars, Doug Braithwaite, Clayton Crane, Trevor Herzine, Clayton Henry, Brian Hitch, Kerry Nord, and many, many more, discover everything you need to know to jump into the world of Valiant's award-winning series right here. Plus, start at the beginning and find out what you might have missed with a brand new guide to Valiant's trade paperback collection. It all starts here in the Valiant Universe Handbook. Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he's got issues com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Instagram to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney. And I've got issues.